Uh, just a couple of agenda items on, um, just a couple of things on our agenda tonight. The most important one is our public hearing schedule at 7.15. So we'll take care of a little um, city council housekeeping before we uh, get to that public hearing. So we'll get started now. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to wait for Council Houseman, or are we getting lucky tonight? <laughs> Proceed. Seven o'clock. I had to. I had to give him one more. <laughs> right? Snooze, you lose. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kim, good. Yeah. Call to order the special meeting of the Beverly City Council on Wednesday, December 29th, 2021. Miss Dixon, please call the roll. Okay. Councilor Ames. Here. Feldman. Here. Flaherty. Here. Flowers, Hausman, Rand? Here. Rotundo, uh, St. Hilaire? Here. And Gonsi? Here. I'm going to go off script and ask our mayor, Mayor Michael P. Cahill, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, let's go to communications, applications, and petitions. Oh, that's me. Sorry. That's you. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, this is order number 246, Department of Environmental Protection Waterways Regulation Program. And it's just an update that we received. Yeah, I would entertain a motion to receive that and place it on file. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries six to zero. Now, just in case you didn't hear it enough, I, we do not have a, uh, a quorum on the Committee on Public Services, so we will, they have a couple of things to come out of their committee tonight, so we have to read and vote on Rule 22. Rule 22 of the uh, Rules and Regulations of the Beverly City Council. All subcommittees of the council shall cause records to be kept of their proceedings. They shall report by ordinance, order, or resolve, unless otherwise provided by law. No subcommittee shall act by separate consultation, and no report of a subcommittee as a body shall be received unless agreed to and subcommittee actually notified and assembled for the purpose in hand and signed by a majority of the councils of the subcommittee. Every subcommittee to which any subject may be referred shall report thereon as soon as possible after full consideration Therefore, in a vote thereon. However, if the council may, by majority vote, order any matter pending before any subcommittee to be acted upon by the subcommittee at its next meeting and or to be with fourth return to the full council. So we'll vote and we'll return those things to the um, <coughs> full council. All those in favor of enacting Rule 22 this evening? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Ms. Dixon, reports from committees. So we have order number 241, the reappointment of William J. Alpine, Jr., 10 Bass River Road, Beverly, to serve on the Beverly Board of Health. Uh, any questions or comments? I think Mr. Alpine deserves battle pay after yesterday, but I'm glad that he still wants to be part of the uh, Board of Health. Um, all those in favor, aye. I right. opposed. Motion carries six to zero. And then we, we also have from Legal Affairs number 245. Dear Honorable City Council, I hereby appoint subject to review and recommendation Justin Jordan, MD, MPH, FAAN, 201 Brimble Avenue, Beverly, to serve on the Beverly Board of Health. This term will be effective from December 31st, 2021 until December 31st, 2024. Any questions or comments? Question comes on the acceptance of the proposal and the adoption of the order. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries six to zero. Uh, we've got to take a recess until 7.15. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. In favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries six to zero. We'll be back for those of you watching at home and in our audience. And we have our public hearing scheduled on order number 233. 
Ms. Dixon, could you please read that order? Yes, I have the legal notice for number 233, ordered that the City Council of the City of Beverly hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 29th, 2021 at 7.15 p.m. City Hall, 191 Cabot Street, third floor. Council Chambers, Beverly, Massachusetts, relative to a recommendation for out of cycle funding for the acquisition of conservation restrictions by the City of Beverly on three parcels of land located within the Marine Farm Complex. Such an acquisition would require an appropriation of up to $1.1 million. And this is published Thursday, December 16th. Thank you. And our Director of Planning, Darlene Wynn, is here to talk about this. Ms. Wynn, thank you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Sorry. Nice to be here. Thank you all. Um, yes, as Christine mentioned, the CPC has made a recommendation to the City Council uh, for the appropriation of $1.1 million for the acquisition of conservation restriction on three parcels at the Marine Farm property. Chelsea, if you can flip the slide, thank you. Um, I am here representing the city of Beverly as the applicant on this process project. So we're working in partnership with the trustees of reservations. David Sentimenta is here from the trustees, um, who is, uh, has a, a purchase agreement to purchase the, um, the parcels that are currently owned by Project Adventure. Um, and they, the trustees, own three parcels totaling 11.6 acres currently that are unrestricted. And in order to help complete the deal and create a mooring farm reservation, um, they are looking for the city to help by contributing the $1.1 million from the CPC fund. So the recommendation that the CPC made and voted on on December 8th 2021, which was unanimous, was $861,048 from the CPA dedicated open space fund. So that's money that is set aside every year directly for open space. And then $238,952 from the CPA undesignated reserve fund in order to total the $1.1 million as part of the application. So the primary purpose of this is open space under that, that CPA category, obviously. The purpose is the acquisition of a conservation restriction, which would limit development opportunity on those parcels. But also there are secondary benefits, preserving the larger open space in the area and historic resource preservation. Um, the marine farm landscape and buildings on the property are also historic resources. Uh, Chelsea, you can flip the slide. So this is just a map of what the ownership would look like um, if the sale goes through or the acquisition goes through. So it's showing the shaded area on the top, the J.C. Phillips, which the city already owns. Um, the hashed green area is the bulk of the Moraine farm, which includes the land that um, the trustees are looking to purchase and the land they already own. Then there is a single residence outlined in pink. Um, and then Let's see, the Bachelor Trust is outlined in yellow, which are the original um, owners of a lot of this land and the benefactors of the land. And Cape Ann Waldorf School owns the parcel below that that is outlined in blue. Um, and then there are a couple other outholdings on the lower corner too that are like the cemetery and other open space areas. Um, Chelsea, go to the next one. So this slide shows the three parcels, they are outlined in red, that are currently owned by the trustees and they're asking the city, um, and the city has put an application to the CPC, which was approved, and is now being discussed tonight for the appropriation um, to basically hold conservation restrictions on those three parcels. Um, they total 11.6 acres the, from top to bottom. So there's two on Cabot Street, pretty close together significant um, frontage on Cabot Street and have very important views of natural resources that contribute to the entire landscape area. And then on the bottom right corner is on Conant Street. And that parcel has, um, is a significant entry point into the park, um, would be restored and maintained with historic and um, uh, the rock entry gate that is there currently can't think of the right word for that, but um, they would restore that, restore that and reopen that and provides access 
to the greater moraine farm property to neighborhoods that might not currently be able to walk to that now um, you can go ahead chelsea so the project goals are to create a 145 acre publicly accessible reservation at the olmstead designed uh, frederick law olmstead designed moraine farm property that is the trustees goal from the city's perspective our goals are ma to maintain this significant property as open space and continue and enhance its preservation for all the aesthetic, historic, environmental, and recreational benefits that offers the community. So in order to do the CPC application, there are 10 criteria that we have to uh, demonstrate whether the project meets, this, this project meets all 10 of those criteria it's detailed in the application. I'm not gonna describe it here, but um, it's consistent with our open space plans. It has been long been identified this parcel as a top priority by the open space committee as a parcel to watch and to acquire when it became available or to support the acquisition when it became available so that it would be maintained as open space. Um, and it, it meets a number of other open space specific criteria, including protecting resources, environmental resources that are in that area. Uh, Chelsea, go ahead. So through the discussions with the trustees, once, we, once they brought this project to us, we negotiated a series of public benefits. Um, so they've agreed to these benefits and they are in the application and will be formalized in a, an agreement between the city and the trustees uh, that there'll be a community garden on 1.75 acres of land for Beverly residents, that there'll be 10 parking spaces for Beverly residents, that they will improve, enhance, and open the historic Conant Street access There'll be at least two days of community, be, community events per year. They'll be coordinated by the trustees in the city. Um, they'll incorporate the Moraine Farm Trail Network into the existing high school cross country course at the Phillips Preserve to the extent that the high school is interested in that. But it is an option that's available. It's also the trail network. Uh, it creates a greater opportunity for just general users to use the trail network and have more trails to, to take advantage of. Um, provide a venue for cross-country skiing and snowshoeing, other winter events. Um, and they will partner with the city on the Phillips Preserve for trail integration and assistance with stewardship and maintenance. Uh, the, I should also note it. We'll go to the next slide. I'm not sure if I said that. So um, I don't think I said that. The Conservation Commission would hold the, conser uh, the conservation restriction, and they already voted that they would accept that and hold that conservation restriction on behalf of the city <clears throat> so we have letters of support from the from these committees the one from the waldorf school came in after the cpc meeting um go ahead chelsea and so just from a scheduling perspective you know the this came up at the cpc meeting that the city and the trustees will, would upon city council appropriating the funds the city would work with the trustees to draft and create the conservation restriction and the agreement, um, and only upon the acceptance and creation of a, and recording of a conservation restriction would the funds be transferred. So that would be what guarantees the public benefit that we've negotiated. And I think that is my last slide. So again, just a picture of the property, um, or an aerial view. Uh, so we are, again, I, me on behalf of the city, but also, as the planning director who staffs the CPC, um, the CPC has requested, has recommended that the city council appropriate $1.1 million, as I described before, between the two funds, um, for the acquisition, acquisition of conservation restriction on the 11.6 acres over three parcels. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. Uh, any questions or comments from members of the city council? I'll go to Council Flaherty first. This is a question and a comment. Can you just clarify, the trustee of reservations owns the property, and the benefit of us purchasing a million dollars, doesn't the trustees of reservations already do that? Can you just kind of clarify that um, for us spending this kind of money? I mean, I think it's well worth it, but just trying to get a clarification because there are trustees of reservations property within the city of Beverly that there are trails on, people walk on. Can you just clarify that? Yeah, so these three, and I, and I can ask David to expand too, but th these three parcels are currently unrestricted, which means they could be developed or they could be sold for development. Okay. Um, 
and it, it's a, David can expand upon it. It has been a, a strategy um, for future growth and to be able to poise them in this position that they are in now. So the other option is they, they could be sold for development rights. So even though the trustees of reservations own that, they still could be developed? Correct. Correct. Okay. And I just want to make a, a quick comment, and I've been pretty consistent over the years with CPC. Not that I want to diminish the city council's role in this, but we appoint you for a reason. You guys spend all year long meeting on, on these projects throughout the year. Um, so um, I will yield to your expertise. Um, I fully support this, and I just, you know, in future projects, it's important to lean, I mean, I know where the, the authority to say yes or no, but, you know, you guys spend a lot more work. There's a lot more work that goes into making these decisions than just a five-minute slide presentation, and I appreciate all the work that you do. Um, not only that, but the Open Space Committee, um, there's a lot of work that goes into to these projects, um, and there's probably a lot of projects that you don't approve that you come before us, and we realize that. So I just wanted to go on the record for uh, appreciate all the work, not only with Darlene does with everybody, but the whole, the, all the committees involved. It's important uh, to realize that, so thank you. Thank you, Tim. Councilor Rotondo. Thank you. I have several questions, Councilor President. Um, in regards to the trustee taking this, uh, looking for the uh, restriction, conservation restriction, how many pieces of property is the trustee sold that they control? I know it can be developed, and what is the current uh, zoning up there right now so that it would be? So I do have a few other questions, but I won't throw them all at you at once. Um, I will say it's in our, it's one of our residential, single family residential zones. I don't exactly know which number. So do we know how many could be developed up there that it would be considered that it would be impeding? Well, that's how the, so that's how the appraisal was based. So mm -hmm. the city wouldn't purchase any property without an appraisal. So it was appraised for eight um, building lots. Right, but we're not, we're not purchasing the property. The, they own the property. We're just purchasing a We're purchasing the it. conservation restrictions. So the appraisal came back about $1.6 million. We had a, our own peer review on the appraisal, which, was justi which justified those numbers. There's a subtraction for the um, conservation restriction of values so that was, I think, about 150,000, and then the trustees is asking for less than that. So the 1.1 million is less than the value. Why is the city the applicant and not the trustees? Because the city is buying. The trustees can't hold their own conservation restriction. Then another entity needs to hold the conservation restriction. So the city is buying the development rights to hold the conservation restriction. Um, it's not. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I know, so, it seems a little... Yeah, it, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's a lot of money for something that we do, will never own. Um, and it just it seems like, as a business person, the, the point of return is not a lot, um, in my opinion. So I, that's, I think you've answered my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rand. Thank you. Um, so I actually would respectfully disagree that I, I do think the benefits are clear and... Um, I, but I also agree that it's a funny situation that we don't see in front of us every day. We're purchasing, basically, we're, we're buying the, you know, the preservation of that property to never be developed. And it is strange that we won't own it, but we're preserving it as open space. I think that's a very normal way that the trustees operate. It's just sort of new to us. Um, but I, this... This project makes brings it to the front of my mind that um, we'd be preserving some open space that has no public transportation access to it. And so even though there is a lot of access to the public and we'd be expanding kind of our ability to park cars and enter and cross connect from the Phillips reservation to the marine farm part of the property there. Um, it, it really strikes me that we have lots of people who need better access to that kind of open space. And I'm wondering if that, um, I didn't see that in the project proposal, but I'm wondering if that came up at all, like increasing, maybe working more with CATA to bring a stop not only to market basket but to some of our open space areas um 
I will uh, defer to the mayor in a second, but uh, the Conan Street ex uh, enhancing the Conan Street exit entrance actually provides um, an access point to the 451 bus, and and the Cada bus goes to that will now goes to that uh, supermarket plaza as well. Um, so it's not uh, it's not you know rapid transit, but it is there is public act there would be public transit access. That's just I think not it, it's not too long of a walk from where the 451 stops. So, so basically from the the Shaw's Plaza to the Conan Street. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then are there, were there any other discussions about sort of reducing car trips to that area? I'm I, not concerned about traffic. I'm just um, picking your brain because I know our administration our, and our city is really dedicated to um, kind of reducing our carbon footprint overall. I know we talked about bikes as well, about having bikes, bicycle accommodations on site, um, which there, there are and would be. Um, and, do you want to, did you want me to defer to you on that? Yeah, okay. Mayor wants to talk. Mr. President, I, <clears throat> one, thank you all for being here. And Mr. President, Councilor Flaherty and Councilor Ames, thank you for giving us one more meeting with you. Um, I. I just, I, and I apologize, I had anticipated that um, after Ms. Wynn presented that Mr. Santa Mena might share a few thoughts prior to the questioning. So I apologize that I didn't ask you that ahead of time, Mr. President, because I think some of what's being asked, he can speak to as well as anybody. Mr. President, do you mind if, if Mr. Santa Mena just shares a few thoughts? He's, he represents trustees right. and he's worked with us directly on this for many months. I, including Councilor Rotundo's question, which, which really, you know, I think deserves uh, the kind of an answer that Mr. Santamena can, can provide. That sound good? Yeah, Thanks. great. Thank you all. Thanks. Mr. David, nice to see you in person. Last time was over Zoom. Right, exactly. Um, let me echo the mayor's uh, appreciation for your coming out this evening and, and beyond that to the members of the CPC and the staff that have really worked um, on this project for very, quite intensely for a, a number of months now. So I really appreciate all of that, all that city involvement. Um, Darlene actually was doing a great job of <laughs> fielding your, your inquiries and I don't want to, um, to duplicate that, but let me just say that, that the trustees, um, if we look at, our, at our, our list of potential new reservations across the entire state, Moraine Farm is, is right at the top of that list of places that we've, we've long wanted to protect, long wanted to provide public access to and be able to interpret and share with the public. So we're, we're really extremely pleased and excited to be at this juncture with this project and, and have this opportunity so close at hand. Um, again, at the end of the day, the goal is to create um, all the sort of real estate machinations aside, you know, about 130 acre of fully public, publicly accessible reservation um, and be able to share both its scenic qualities, historic qualities, the, the Olmstead design landscape, again, that Darlene referenced there really are some tremendous, some tremendous aspects to this property. And it is, it is quite accessible both by pedestrians, uh, by car, and to the, to the public um, transit network as well. So we're really very pleased about that. Um, I, I wanna just back up for a second and talk a little bit about the, the Batchelder family and their involvement and role here. Um, George and Mimi Batchelder actually donated a conservation restriction over in the majority of the of the Moraine Farm property in 1990. Um, and so eliminated the majority of the development potential of the property at that juncture. And that's a restriction that the trustees co-hold with the Essex County Greenbelt Association. Um, when they imposed that restriction, by design, they left a few specific strategic parcels out of that restriction, knowing that at some point in time in the future, there might be the need to to generate some value to the property to enable exactly this kind of uh, opportunity to be taken advantage of. So those, those triangles and the little wedge off of, off of Corner Street were left, again, intentionally out of that restriction in, a, in an effort to retain some value that could be, could be monetized, if you will, either through this kind of sale of the development rights or through the sale of the property for development. Um, so we've, no one wanted that, no one wants that latter outcome. <coughs> And that was why we came to the city and, and suggested this conservation restriction structure. Again, as Arlene mentioned, the, the value of those development rights is about $1.5 million. 
we've asked the city to consider a $1.1 million uh, investment. And I would also note that uh, we've had a, a very successful private capital campaign that's been running in parallel with this. Um, we have about a, f the, the, our purchase price of property is 3.2 million. We have a $4.15 million capital campaign because we're gonna need some funds to operate and endow the property with. Um, and we, that's been, the, res the response to that has been terrific. Um, so we don't, I don't feel like we're asking the city for a, a, a disproportionate amount of, of funding for this particular project. <coughs> so maybe I'll leave it there and see if I've been able to answer the councilors' questions or if there are any others. You got a face. I, I was looking at Council Rotundo. He's got a face. I always have a face. I, I know you do, but do, <laughs> I'm you, good. do you have anything? I, I, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. You're fine? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. David, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor St. Hilaire, then we'll go right to Kathleen Feldman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I'm inclined to be in support of this project. I think it's a rare opportunity to protect a, a very beautiful property, and I know it's been on the radar for a long time. And I think from a public benefit point of view, I think COVID has taught us, you know, the importance of open space and outdoor recreation on our, our health and, and wellness. Um, my question, though, is, is really around priorities on the open space side, and, and, and specifically, um, there's been a lot of talk recently about a Beverly Housing Authority parcel on Simon Street. And I know Mayor Cahill, you were uh, quoted in the paper talking about potentially using CPA dollars um, potentially to purchase that at some point. So I guess my question is maybe for you, Mayor, or for Darlene, you know, does this, does spending 1.1 million here prohibit us from doing something, you know, on, on the Simon Street property? And, and, you know, what is the status of that project, if I might add? I defer to my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Um, so we've been talking for some time and talking, you know, with, with our friends on the Open Space and Recreation Committee and, and on the Community Preservation Committee about the coming, uh, the coming projects, the coming demands, the coming open space opportunities. And so for some time now, we've been looking at this possibility at Moraine Farm. We've been looking at uh, a parcel of land along uh, Green Street that we still hope sometime in the not too distant future we may be able to move on. Um, that is a, a parcel that you know, we, we've had a, um, an appraisal done that's 220-ish. It's over $200,000. Um, and, and we are you know, trying to, to meet with the property owners. Uh, that's something that would give us better access to the whole Green Hill property from the Green Street end. Um, and, and there are others, we, and, and in some ways, you don't always know what the next one coming up is, but the Open Space and Rec Committee does a really good job of trying to track, identify and track. Um, and so we know that it's coming. We know that in certain years, there hasn't been an open space ask of, of note before the CPC, and that's why that 826 has, has grown in that, in that uh, fund, because as Ms. Wynn said, each year under the, under the CPA law, 10% of that year's money needs to go to open space and um, either passive or active recreation. 10% needs to go to affordable housing and 10% needs to go to um, historic preservation. The remaining 70 can go anywhere, right? So that's how that account has grown for the open space ask. Um, we've had some years that have been really heavy affordable housing. We've had some years that have been heavy historic preservation. This year of necessity with this that's before you, if you uh, vote to appropriate, will be heavy on open space. And so, and it's not the only thing that we'll be asking. You, you referenced this, the two Simons, there's actually two Simon Street lots. And um, in working with Councillor Ames, in working with the, uh, the Gloucester Crossing neighborhood, uh, in, in just a wonderful group of people, and I see the mayor of Gloucester Cross and Carroll is with us tonight. You know, we, we've had a lot of really productive conversations. That neighborhood is, is one of the densest neighborhoods in the city. It also is one of the highest concentration of, of children and school age kids, and very little open space. Most of the, uh, most of the homes don't have yards of any, of any note. So this is, as you said, it's, it's a very unique opportunity and so we are going to be asking for help with that. What I said to the CPC when we met uh, on, on the Marine Farm uh, proposal was that we anticipate, well, 
we're going to respond to both RFPs that the, that the housing authorities put out. If we're selected on one or both, then we'll be coming back to the CPC with a request for funding. What I'd suggested is we will come back and ask for half of the money and try to provide another source for the other half. We're in the process of trying to determine whether ARPA funds are eligible for that use. If they are, that's what we'll look to do. If they aren't, we may end up looking to free cash. And that would, that would come back to involving you folks directly there. Um, so that's some of the thinking right now. I hope that's helpful. Does, it, does that answer it? Yeah, it's very helpful. Thank you. Sure, thanks. Yeah, great answer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council Feldman. Yes, thank you. Um, I had the benefit of sitting in on the CPC meeting um, earlier this month, which was, I was thrilled um, to hear about this proposal and it was uh, brought up by, also by one of my constituents, um, David Alden, Pierre, Pierre Alden um, on the Open Space Committee. And I, um, to underline, I know that um, Councilor Rand had questioned in terms of the accessibility. Um, and I, I mentioned this at the CPC meeting as well, that the, the, as a person that lives in that neighborhood and walks and bikes and go, uh, goes to J.C. Phillips um, quite often with my family, that Conant Street um, access point is so huge in terms of safe accessibility to that entire parcel of land because currently now that strip of 97 that you have to use to access J.C. Phillips requires a car and there's really no other safe way like I can't tell my kids to go bike um, to go go on a hike or a walk or go, or go use the trails because it's just not safe because there's not an accessible pedestrian or bike point um, to access the property so I'm really thrilled I know it's the smallest thing but that is just such a critical point of access for you know the bus bus lines right there it's just a hop from that Shaw's Plaza really I mean I send my kids walking over in that direction all the time and in addition when when um, I can't remember um, which person from the trustees was speaking but um, I had asked about the house the house at Moraine Farms and its use uh, Beverly's community use of the house and the space um, because there's really a shortage of community meeting spaces in that the North Beverly area of to access. It's really um, the basement of that church on Conant and Cabot Street. That's pretty much the only place that community type meetings happen in the area. And I'm just really excited to have something else that's preserved in the area that our, the, Bever the city of Beverly can partner with that we can have access to for community events. and. Um, and the placement of the parcel in addition to that is is really wedged right in between two of the most commercially kind of developed zones of Beverly in terms of up on San Fonzo and the airport and then on the other side all the all of the development along 1A so it's just it seems like really a, a no a win-win for like the city and the constituents of Ward 5 I haven't had everyone is in the neighborhood is just thrilled to hear that this area would be preserved. So I just wanted to voice my support um, for the project and I had a lot of my questions answered prior to this, so thanks. Nice job, Councilor Feldman. Uh, Councilor Rames. Thank you. Maybe the last time I do this. <laughs> so um, thanks everybody for being here. I do have a bunch of questions and I agree, I just want to with Councillor St. Hilaire that is in terms of priorities and uh, representing especially um, the urban parts of Ward 3 where often people, they don't have open space. They also don't have cars very often. They don't have easy access to a place like Moraine Farm. So whether it's for the kids and Project Adventure or I was just wondering the kind of programming that you were thinking, you know, could be developed where where kids who don't generally have this in their lives um, could see this, these resources um, work for them as well. Um, sure, I, I will just say that our, you know, our programming for the property is is yet to be determined, obviously, but we don't want to put the cart before the horse. 
but we're really excited about the opportunity to work with Beverly. It's been great to work with the city on things like the community garden and opening up that and, and committing to opening up that Kona Street access. It was great for us to hear how important that was. So we're excited to work with you know the school department, the rec department to figure out ways to get Beverly residents, kids, adults, seniors, whomever out, out to the property. I mean, the, the driving motivation for us is to be able to make this property available to the public. That's what really is, is important to us. Um, and so we're really excited to figure out what makes sense for the city and for its residents. Because I, I think um, for a lot of kids downtown that, or even the families, it can be a deal breaker, but getting them from where they are to the property can, and just to give them quality programming there can be a challenge. Can I, do you, may I ask, what is your role with the trustees? I'm sorry, I'm the Associate Director for Land Conservation. Okay. And um, could you describe some of the other like projects that you've put together throughout the state? Um, sure, I mean, um, I, I would start with the one you all know well, which is Long Hill, um, which as, as I'm sure you're aware, has been through a, a fairly significant um, improvement and transformation process over the last year to 18 months. Um, we, re we really feel like Long Hill and Moraine Farm are gonna complement each other really, really nicely. Moraine, Moraine is gonna have more of a open space and passive recreational focus, whereas with the, with the, with the sort of the overlay of the design landscape, whereas um, you know, Long Hill is sort of more formal, the public gardens, more of a horticultural focus. Um, you know, we have properties, I think about, we have the Ames Reservation down in Easton, which is a little bit similar in the sense that it's, it's really within, adjacent to the core of the community. Um, that's the, the former Governor Ames estate. Um, and, and that it serves that community. It's, it, it's not as dramatic, frankly, as, as Moraine but it does serve some of the same, um, same it's, goals. It's my understanding that um, half of that money was reimbursed by a state land grant. Is the, that something that could happen here, an EOEEA grant? So the way that it, this, this project doesn't lend itself to a, land, to a land grant for a couple of reasons. One is partially timing, again, we, you know, just to back up for a second, Project Adventure put the property on the market about a year ago, in early in December of 2020. We then went through a, a fairly intensive negotiation period for about five or six months before we reached the agreement, which was signed up in May or early June. Um, and then we have to close on the property by the end of the calendar year, so we're, we're hours away from our deadline here. Mm -hmm. um, that put us out of, um, the deadline for the for the um, land and park grants was before we had the property under agreement, so we didn't have that we didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, in this instance. But I guess what I would say is, if you look at the prop at the project as a whole, you know we're bringing, you know, three quarters of the funding to the table through our our capital campaign. Um, so there is leverage, good leverage, we feel like, for the city's investment via that capital campaign. And what do you see as recreation? Is so I saw some of what they talked about, and you know I'll be a little so would say mountain biking on some of those trails be? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we allow generally of, of the full suite of of um, human powered activities at our at our properties, with with some tweaks just based on on the specifics. But yeah, so walking, running, um, biking, whether it's mountain biking or gravel biking or call it what you will would all be would all be allowable um you know we've we're really interested in this notion of, of partnering with the high school to to improve or expand the cross country course um so it's it the property lends itself to that again because it, it, it's an it's another opportunity to leverage the phillips trail network as well and and, and marry those two together um, I, I should note that you know project adventure is going to stay on the property so they're going to become a, a tenant of ours. So they're going to lease back their office space in the in the in the house, and they're going to continue to have access to their challenge course. Um, so their their operation is going to continue largely un, unchanged after this uh, transaction takes place. So to the extent that that programming is serving 
Beverly Kids that'll continue to be available. And then finally, so in terms of Long Hill, so it, does the benefits, the contract that you set up with the city was just for Moraine Farm. It didn't impact Long Hill at all. No. Was there any reason for that, just curiously? Um, no, I think it's just that our, our vision for Long Hill um, didn't really lend itself to, to a municipal role in the same sense. We are, you know, we've owned that property for a long time. Um, the improvements we wanted to make were, um, we thought, important, but didn't fit into a CPA um, category as, as neatly as the Moraine Farm one does. Okay. So we, we fundraised all that, all that privately okay. as well. That, that's helpful. That's helpful. Yeah, and so it sounded like I had heard either through the paper or some of these documents here that you had had a hard time raising the last million dollars for this, but you think you're going to re reach your goal. We're, yeah, we're, we're at a point where we can close on the property, assuming that the city's funding is. Okay. Okay. And just in terms of um, just sort of pivot to Simon Street a little bit, Thrilled to hear that you're thinking. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, you're off the. <laughs> um, I'm thrilled to hear that you're thinking about using um, free cash there. And so, could you just speak to the remaining unrestricted dollars, please, in the CPA budget that might be available for one of those parcels? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, so I, I guess I'd say, Councilman, and I, I don't want to put anyone else on the spot here, but um, if anybody wants to, to join in the conversation, we know that the inflow of FY22 funds to, to CPA is roughly 1.2 this year. Okay. So I'm getting nods from the, from the CPC members. Um, <clears throat> you, can, you saw earlier that this this project would tap about 230 of that. Is that right? Um, yeah. 20 percent of that 1.2 can't go to this. It's got to go into one of the other two categories, and then 230 goes there. So, you, but you and, and there are other applications coming. It looks like a har like a harbor, you know, harbor light or you know has a project moving. Well, that's true. There, there. Yep. Um, yep. There are several pre apps that are not going forward. Um, so yeah, I just. And of course, this is the last day that I sit here and get to ask these questions. So I want to make sure, you know, as I walk away, sure. that that there's a real sense that because that this can happen. Because also, I believe that the housing authority seems to be a pretty cooperative partner in the way that they've written these RFPs. And I think every everyone, I think I, the residents you, Mr. Mayor, and your administration were all on the same side of this. And so I, but for me, like everything, if you've learned anything about me for the last two years, it's all about the money. You know, I believe that it's sort of all about the money because you can, and there are always choices that have to be made. So I, I have, and I know we've been talking about trying to use some ARPA funds for this. And I have a phenomenal email here from Councilor Elect Sweeney, and there is sort of, it's, it's not an easy path. And there's got to be a determination of um, figuring out what, cal what the calculation for economic loss, I think, is given the fact that it is in the census tract of the city that has had the most um, impact from COVID. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really important as a community, I believe that we invest in the lives of the people that are there. I think the impact of a couple of lots on Simon Street will be huge for those families. So I, I just, once again, I, you know, I just reiterate, I'm, I'm happy to hear you talking about free cash because I, I worry that the ARPA funds will not fill the void. And I know that there are other pressures beyond Simon Street. Yep. But it, it's it's certainly time for this neighborhood to get a hand. So, Ag so you're feeling agreed and you're feeling confident that this is going to happen. Well, 
I'm, I'm confident that we're going to put our best foot forward on these responses to the two RFPs, and I'm confident that we're going to ask our colleagues on the CPC and your successes on the city council for the financial resources to do it. And then, Beyond that, it's, it's, you know, it's you other folks who have decisions, who will have decisions. True. And, that, uh, and, and let me say, I'm hopeful that our responses will be strong enough to be successful when the, when the housing authority opens the responses and goes through their, their, their evaluation. And I believe that also your um, willingness to use some free cash will, can also sort of bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, could I just go back to what Councillor Rand asked earlier, because I apologize, Please. you didn't really answer. You, you brought up a great point about looking to CADA. Ms. Wynn pointed out rightly that the 451 a T bus does go by the end of, of Conant up by the plaza, and that's good. CADA may, I mean, we, we've just redone the CADA maps, so we'll see. Um, um, and, and at the same time, and then going to Councillor Ames' question, you know, we do transport kids through our summer parks programs around the city, and, you know, and the schools obviously transport for field trips. So I think there are a lot of opportunities that we'll be able to collectively, creatively uh, find to help people access uh, that campus. I think another note I'd, I'd make is that we collectively over time are addressing opportunities in all six wards and some of them become more easily accessible for those who can walk to them. And certainly as, 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 as um, Councillor Feldman said, there are a good number of people for whom walking or biking to this particular property is a natural based on where they live in, in Ward 5 as well. So there's a lot there um, and you know really appreciate the the thinking behind what you're saying. And I'm glad Ms. Wynn mentioned bi biking um, because, you know, micro mobility, biking in other forms is a way that we'll be encouraging people to, you know, to access any and all of our properties and things as simple as, you know, as uh, bicycle furniture, meaning bike racks and other things are going to matter at, at sites like this and others all around town. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Mm -hmm. Councilor Ames, you're good? Oh, Councilor Rand, go ahead. I have one more quick detail question and thank you for that mayor um and i hadn't actually connected sort of the shaw's plaza to conant street in my mind just because i don't walk that area so thank you for pointing out that that is actually pretty close together um detail question just on the in one of the bullet points of the benefits is the creation and management of a of the community garden can you just clarify who's creating and managing? Is that the city or is that the trustees creating and managing? I get this one. Um, the trustees are providing the space okay. to create a, a community garden that we would have to identify a, ma a management structure for, which we've, we've gone through that process in trying to relocate the I'm community familiar. garden to Emily yes. Way, and you know <laughs> maybe that didn't end up being the best location for it. So, um, you know we have to look again at. Uh, I mean, the, largely we like the garden to be self-managed to some extent uh, without a lot of oversight. We know we ran into some challenges with that, but hopefully that could be um, the future with with the support of the trustees as the landowner and and the city kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I will say that the, the community garden is an element of this that we hadn't sort of anticipated at, at the front end, but we're really excited about it. Um, just as a note, the, the trustees actually runs 56 community gardens in the city of Boston. Um, so we have fairly significant, significant experience with, with community gardens in a, in a very urban setting. So this is a little bit different, but I think we, can, we have some experience to bring to bear. But we view this, we don't view this as like a hands off, like this is the city's thing to do. We, we do view it as a collaborative undertaking for sure. Um, and we haven't worked at the exact structure, but it's certainly something we wanna be you know, hands on and involved with. And we're not just, again, turning the land over to the city and saying, have at it and good luck, right? We, we, we want it to be successful and to represent the city well and to represent the property well. So we're gonna, we're gonna stay involved for sure. Okay. <coughs> great news. I think partnership and collaboration is a great way to success. Is, is there already water at that particular site? I know there's water in other areas of Marine Farm. We, we would need to bring water in from the street. It's okay. not a long distance, about 30, 
Yeah. Okay, 40, 50, 40 feet, 50 feet. We'd have to bring water into that, to that space. Got it. Okay. Because there you. is water on site, but it wouldn't be sufficient for this added, okay. added use. Got it. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Council Feldman. I was actually going to ask them to speak more about the community garden. So that's all covered. We're all good. That was another pro recreational programming point that I thought was important for the space. So. Great. Uh, anybody else from the council? Do any members of the public wish to ask a question or make a comment about this appropriation? Charlie, please. Name and address for the record, Charlie. Please. Hello, my name is Charlie Mann. I live at 21 Riverview Street, Beverly. I'm on the Beverly Open Space Committee. And I just, you know, I'm very much in favor of this. We on the Open Space Committee for 10 years have had our eyes on this piece of property. And we're really fortunate that, you know, trustees is doing this because it's really leveraging CPC money big time. Because what they're really, well, if you go back to 1991, George Batchelder put the CR on the 140 acres there, so he gave up millions of dollars of value for his dream that it could be a reservation. And then in 1999, the year he died, he really wanted to see it happen, but trustees wasn't ready to do it. And he sold at that time uh, the 66 acres of Project Adventure. You know, the, the Batchelder Trust was you know set up and everything, but it still just wasn't ready to happen. And so now, you know, fast forward to, to today, Project Adventures situations changed. So there's an opportunity here for the city of Beverly to participate in this. So trustees is putting in far more than we are. And it's really not about those three or the three parcels, the however many building lots. We're extinguishing those and that'll permanently be open space. But this reservation is gonna be permanently a reservation for you know, so it's safe to say that most of the people that are going to use it haven't even been born yet. This is in perpetuity. It's like an amazing, it's a really big thing we're doing for the people of Beverly. And um, it's, what else was I going to say? It's, um, well, at any rate, that, that, that's enough. I think it's a, it, it's a really special thing, and uh, we're fortunate to be able to have it. So. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Thank you for everything that you've done to get to this point. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Name and address. Upolo Please. Rick Marciano, 141 McKay Street. Uh, what will be the buy right uses of these, of these properties? I've already heard bikes, uh, hiking, walking. Uh, will dogs be part of it? And will there be any restrictions on this property? And backup parking spaces. I see we only have 10 parking spaces. Will there be any backup parking spaces available? Mayor's gonna grab rest. this one. Thank you, Mr. Marciano. On, on the parking, those 10 spaces are spaces that'll be set aside for Beverly residents only. There'll be significantly more parking than that on, on, the, on the site in total. Can you take the rest? Sure. Hey, thanks, Dave. Um, so let me take the dog question first, and, and, and dogs are a, a, a management challenge. What we anticipate here is that the property will be open to two dogs. We would, we would ask they be leashed. I think this is probably not a place that lends itself to off-leash um, dog use, but we would welcome dogs and their owners on leash. Um, uh, in terms of buy right, I mean, it's gonna be open to the public. Um, all, as I said, all those sort of t typical, traditional, passive recreational uses would be allowed. Um, and beyond that, you know, we haven't, we haven't established what the, what the program menu is going to look like. But that's the, that's the big picture. Yeah, and then you sit there on the any type of restrictions, are you going to wait until you get the program? So. Well, what, um, I mean, it's restricted in the sense that it's, you know, it's all going to have the cons conservation restrictions on it. So that's the, that's the primary form of restriction that we would, will be operating under like any other landowner would. So and I, I guess and this is a bit of a technicality, but I would just note that we're going to be assigning our rights under that restriction that we already hold to the Greenbelt Association. So we're not going to be in the role of, of, of monitoring and enforcing restriction against ourselves. So there will be a, a separation of powers, if you will, around that restriction. 
And the other thing with the monies is, you know, I, the project, everything looks great. I think it benefits the city as a whole. But the, uh, the Simon Street parks, I mean, that, that definitely is an issue. I've been down there, looked at those parks. Just in case some of the council are not aware, these are already pre-existing parks. They've existed almost 30 years, and these citizens in this very densely populated area that the mayor's already spoke about, they've used these parks in the past. They just closed one about a year ago. The other park was a toddler park. One of them 60 feet approximately, the other one's about 70 feet approximately. Very, very small spaces, but uh, they provide, I mean, socially wise, socializing, that's what we need in these areas. It's so important to make this a top priority for these parks right in this specific area. The other problem in this area is parking. Uh, back in 2007, the YMCA on Mill Street, a couple of streets down, they built 49 units. And they could build those with only 20 parking spaces available for those units. So in that whole area, parking is a nightmare. These two parking spaces, currently nine feet by 18 feet, they can, they can hold 13 vehicles right now. If these lots become anything else but, they may lose nine parking spaces. So the parking there, again, is so bad in this area that it would be for us to keep these parks in this area is very, very vital to lo lose those nine parking spaces. The police have enough problem with taking care of all the domestic issues in this area, which includes the parking. So we've got to do our best to stop that and make sure that these neighbors con con continuously use these pre-existing parks, again, that have been there for 30 years. One of the areas is kind of a social meeting area. The other, the other park, it was for toddlers years ago. A lot of very good memories there. And the neighbors did take care of these parks. So I just want to just try to sum up. I mean, just do your best to keep that a priority, to keep these parks in the neighborhood. And we only have to refurbish them. The fences are already pre-existing and a few other items. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. Uh, sir, please. Council President, Councilors, uh, Dean Berg, uh, 45 Neptune Street. Um, I'm the Executive Director at Green Beverly. I just want to make a comment. Uh, first of all, we're in full support of this acquisition of the project, um, and for a couple of reasons, uh, and I'll talk about it from a sustainability standpoint. Um, kind of taking off of Councilor Rand's question about car traffic or public transit and reducing carbon footprint, a couple of things that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, so we've been, we've developed a good relationship with the trustees and with one of the tenants, uh, New Entry Sustainable Farming Project over the last six months, and worked with them on a couple things. One is the Great Pumpkin Smash. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it was, um, I think, a, a good success. It really, uh, in working with the trustees and working with New Entry, it really promoted composting, it promoted sustainability. It was a great community event. Um, and I think Councilor Amy were asking about programming, so you know, that may be one thing that falls in the programming bucket. The other thing is with uh, the tenant new entry sustainable farming project, we're talking to them about a lot of expanded sustainable farming practices and what they can do, things like year round growing. And uh, we've had a chance to work with the director at Long Hill, uh, Jared Bowers. Um, and he is, all about sustainable gardening and sustainable growing, and we're really excited about what this may do to help new entries expand its year-round growing and sustainable farming practices. And maybe the last thing I'll say is, and correct me, David, if I misspeak on this one, but um, with the new trustee CEO having a strong passion for sustainability, uh, we're very excited about where this can go. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. Nice to see you in person. I know that we met over the, uh, yeah. on a Zoom meeting earlier this year. Thank you. Yeah, that's the one thing that was good about Zoom. We didn't have to wear masks. We could see everybody's faces. Um, anybody else? Counselors, we're all good. Mayor Cahill, thank you. David, thank you. Darlene, of course, great work. Uh, and this, the CPC committee, uh, nice job on this one. So I would, uh, I'm going to close our public hearing, and then I would entertain a motion to appropriate $1.1 million to the City of Beverly for the purpose of purchasing a perpetual conservation restriction on approximately 11 acres of land 
owned by the trustees of the reservations, located within the Moraine Farm Complex. The Community Preservation Act <coughs> spending purpose is acquisition under the category of open space. Set appropriation shall consist of $861,048 from the CPA open space fund balance and $238,952 from the CPA undesignated reserve fund balance. So moved. Second. And how about a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five to one. And that's all we have for tonight. I can't think of a better thing that I could do at my last meeting. This is great. And Mr. Mann summed it up that we just did something for Beverly residents that haven't been born yet. Great stuff. So uh, Kim in the booth, thank you for the one more meeting. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Oh, of course, Mayor Cahill. What was the, the vote again? Five to one. Was it one didn't vote? No, one dissented. No, we have seven of you. Oh, the seven. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry six <laughs> I forgot. He, he, he showed up late and he dissented. So it's six to one. <laughs> Thank you. All right. What do you think? Uh, good luck to everybody on January 3rd at inauguration. Um, I'm sure Mayor Kale will have a lot of good things to say. And that will be on BevCam, correct, Kim? Yes. And it is at the high school open to the public, uh, you know, COVID restrictions, masks and everything. Great. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries seven to zero. Thank you.